Hello out there champs and welcome to the show. Now Intel has just released Kaby Lake processors for the desktop and they've released a new motherboard chipset, the Z270 chipset in this case. Now what you need to know about the 200 series chipset is basically it's not that much different from the Z100 series other than they've opened up some more PCI lanes and the reason they've done that is so the motherboards will support Intel Optane. Now Optane is just like, sort of like a super fast SSD and it will be used for caching hard drives and other SATA devices. Now this thing here is represents pretty much the best bang for buck when it comes to Z270 chipset motherboard. This is the ASUS Strix Z270 gaming motherboard, bang on right in the middle of the range. Not as expensive as the Republic of Gaming motherboards, bang on in the middle there. And I think this represents best bang for buck there. And have a look at it. It is friggin' gorgeous. This is motherboard design done right. Have a look at this stealth look of it. This matte black, matte grey. It is just beautiful. I really hate a lot of the gaming aesthetic on laptops and motherboards, cases, etc. This is the kind of motherboard I would love. You know I like my white things, but if I can't have white, matte black is the next best thing. And I'm really getting sick of RGB Christmas light things and things that look like spaceships and red and black things, glossy black. No, this look at it. Metal heat sinks here. Have a look at that metal alloy. Here again, metal alloy heat sink. This shroud here is plastic, but it's a nice matte plastic. So let's get on to its specs. Of course, it's socket 1151, supports six and seventh generation i3, i5, i7s and Pentium and Cel Celeron <laughs> processors. I can never say that word. Of course, based on the Intel Z270 chipset. So this takes Kaby Lake and Sky Lake. Basically, if you're building a new PC for gaming, you want to, you might as well get the Z270. This has four DDR4 RAM slots, supports up to 3,866 megahertz overclock. <laughs> That's insane speed. Of course, you can use the XMP profiles and it's dual channel and supports a maximum of 64 gigs. You have two PCIe times 16 slots here. Both of these are reinforced. If you use them together, they're eight by eight. A one by four PCI Express slot and these smaller ones there, they're just one times PCI Express slot there. So you're well covered if you want to do your Crossfire, SLI and all that. And the reinforcement is a great thing. Two M.2 slots and that's where you're getting those extra lanes opened up there. You have one here and one here and they support all the sizes of M.2 there. You have six SATA ports. They've got rid of all this SATA Express and all that other superfluous stuff that never gets used. So that's a good thing. It's ATX format. Now let's just have a little bit of a tour here. Of course you have all these heat sinks there. Two RGB headers. So if you're into RGB, you're covered there. The only thing here that lights up is this thing here. So it's not full of all this Christmas tree stuff. It's good. It's nice. It's understated and it's the way I like my motherboards. If you want to add more, yeah, you've got the headers there to do it. So go ahead and do it. One thing that's very unique about this is it actually has mounting points for 3D printed stuff. So along with this beautiful design, you can actually print out 3D things. And I don't know if we'll catch on, but it's great that you can do that sort of thing. You'll be able to do your own sort of name plates and shrouds and the sky's the limit with 3D printing. And I think this thing, it reminds me of a Lamborghini. Like, I'll show a picture here of a photo of a Lamborghini and having those mounts to mount your 3D things that you print. It's a cool thing. And I would actually like to see what people get up to with that. It also syncs up with Aura software. So you can sync up all your keyboards and monitors and all those sort of things. You can sync up that lighting with the lighting from here controllable by the Aura software. Easy to overclock. This is one area where I think ASUS standalone. It's got the best BIOS in my opinion. Very easy to overclock, one click bang. If you don't know what you're doing, this is definitely the motherboard you want. You want to overclock with the least amount of hassle. And you can also dig in there and do the settings yourself. You also have the Supreme FX Sound quality Nishicon capacitors there and you'll see that it's tucked away here and the way it's designed is it's going to get the least amount of electromagnetic static through this setup here. Dual amps for your headphones. If you're just wanting an all-in-one 
audio solution where you don't have to use a audio DAC. Usually on your motherboard, when you have audio, you'll suffer static and you, you know if you're streaming and stuff like that it's not the best solution to use your onboard audio but this changes the game in that regard it definitely alleviates the need to buy a sound card or external DAC one thing I use all the time is you can output audio to different devices so what I mean by that is say for example you're editing on Premiere Pro you can output Premiere Pro sound into your headphones and then if you're gaming you can output it into your speakers or your or your monitor so you can output to different areas you don't have to have one universal global sound where you play a video or you edit in Premiere it comes out of one sound source one speaker or one headphone this way you can separate your audio fantastic idea so you want to game on your headphones and you want to watch YouTube on your speakers well you can do that with this this thing here has all also has the latest Intel 1219V Ethernet that reduces the CPU overhead and it has a very high TCIP throughput there. So gaming, you're gonna get the edge. Has all the built-in surge protection you would expect from ASUS. You don't have to worry about overclocking and just on overclocking. You should get anything from 4.6 depending on what you're using. If you're using a Kaby Lake CPU, you should get anything from 4.6 to 5 gigahertz depending on what CPU you're using, obviously. Now, not everybody's gonna get that. And so say for example, I put a Kaby Lake in here now and I get 4.6. That doesn't mean you're gonna get 4.6. You may get five gigahertz. And even if I put a Kaby Lake in here and I get five gigahertz, that doesn't mean you're going to get five gigahertz the most important thing when it comes to overclocking is the cpu did you win the lottery how good can your cpu overclock this will not be your bottleneck this one especially in the zeus board it's not going to happen the most important thing is the cpu when you're overclocking did you get a good one did you win the lottery there second most important or equal second most important would be your heat and your power supply because when you overclock near the edge any fluctuation in current will crash your computer there they're very sensitive to current fluctuations when they're on the edge and that's where the power supply comes in when you're on the edge it's just going to crash so you need a power supply that has very little fluctuations in the current it provides motherboards can be responsible for not providing the exact right amount of current but in my experience it's more likely the power supply so let's have a look at the ports usb 3.1 type a usb 3.1 type c so you get two 3.1 usbs there dvi display port hdmi four usb 3s your ps2 the awesome intel nick there and then your audio interface there with optical out as well you have plenty of fan headers here some more usb connections and usb 3 com ports you're pretty much covered for everything you need and one wonders do you actually need a higher end motherboard than this best bang for buck for sure azu strix you can trust it definitely recommend this motherboard it has plenty of fan headers or headers that you can use for pumps it's actually got more of those than my x99 board and without having tested all the other motherboards i'll definitely say that it'll be hard to beat this as the best bang for buck and the best motherboard in this segment in this mid-range segment there along with the z270e which has a couple of extra features over this so i'm going to put it through its paces now and i will leave some overlays there on what overclock i got out of it but remember this doesn't mean you'll get that so that's it that's my review of the azus strix z270f gaming motherboard if you like this video give me a thumbs up there if you're new around here why not subscribe? I'd like to really thank you guys for watching. And until next time, guys, tally ho.